yeah, this is uh, honestly uh, irreparable. Uh, we can't fix it, we just have to start all over again. I just... Uh... So in today's video, guys, I'm going to be starting the repair work on the pond. Um, basically, we're going to have to drain out all the water from underneath. And yeah, so I'm going to be going through the repair work, doing it all, getting the water out from underneath. So for those of you who don't know, the pond got punctured, water got underneath, and obviously the water won't go away because it's clear underneath the pond. So we have to now drain it out with the pump and yeah, get all the water out. So that's what I'm doing in today's video, get all the water out and yeah, just documenting that. So I hope you enjoy. So when we started, the first task was to remove these slabs from the edge of the pond. Uh, they were concreted down, but that wasn't too hard to remove. Just chiseled it with a crowbar and we just pulled them off to the side. We'll, re we'll put them back down afterwards. And once we've done that, we put up the liner and we just sort of slid the pump underneath the liner. As you can see here, we brought the pump across and just sort of shimmied it underneath the liner so that it was in the water. And once that happened, we turned the pump on and just sort of let it drain. We left it running, as you can see here, I'd say for about five, 10 minutes just to start off with, just to remove the water from the uh, edges of the pond. And as we let it run, we just sort of made sure that the, all the bits around the edges were clean and just sort of make sure no dirt got inside the pond so that there would be no contamination. So we had the pump running on it now for about five minutes and it's pumping out water. As you can see, the water level's dropped quite a bit. It's pumping out water from here, out through the pipe, and um, all the way over to here, out of the pipe here. And as you can see, it's a lot of water coming out from underneath the um, underneath the pond. But the good sign is with this is it's clear, clean water. And this is crystal like that. Look at that. Absolutely crystal clear water. Beautiful water. And that's a good sign because it means no mud has... Um, got underneath the liner and the issue with that would have been if mud got underneath rather than water we couldn't do anything about it let's take up all the liner dig underneath so we're just sucking it all out now once it's all out because we, we've done the repair already but also the water wouldn't go away so we can suck out the water push the liner back and then we can fill it back up but yeah it's just running underneath the liner here and also we have this membrane layer as well that's what kept all the mud out this membrane layer it sort of just kept all the mud away from getting underneath. So yeah, it's going well. So once we had it running for about five minutes on the shallow area, we pushed it down with a pole to the deep end to get more water out. And in doing so, we, en we ended up breaking the pipe. And as I'll show you here, it was quite bad. Well, uh, even worse news now. Um, the pump has cracked here. And what that basically means is this is now not watertight. So pump doesn't work anymore so back to the drawing board you know major setback and yeah not great at this point i thought it was all over but thanks to a bit of duct tape and a bit of wire we managed to repair the uh piece just temporarily by tightening it around the uh, pump and yeah you know tape does help i guess so after this we were able to carry on pumping out the water and this time you know we tried to put it as deep in as we possibly could um, once we'd uh, sort of put the pipe underneath, you know, we got it into the shallow area, but the issue was most of the water was in the deep end in the middle. So in the end, I actually had to climb underneath the liner, as you will see here, and, you know, push it down as far as I possibly could so that we're getting all the water out. And, you know, we had to move another slab as well to get enough slack to get underneath the liner. So as you can see here, I actually crawl underneath the liner to sort of push the pump down as far as we could. So this is a close-up view of what we were doing. Uh, so as you can see, we removed three slabs and just sort of pulled the liner up. That was the excess concrete there. And, you know, underneath the liner was the membrane and we had to sort of shimmy the pump underneath this ledge here to get it sort of as deep as we can. You can sort of see the water here. And actually in this next video, I get a nicer uh, close-up video of all the water underneath the uh, liner. Here you go here with a bit of flash. As you can see, the membrane is staying stick to the ground, which is keeping the mud out. And, you know, the water's nice and clear. And then the water is being pumped out through this pipe here, all the ones, the grass. And, you know, as you can see, the water, you know, is coming out fast. There was a lot of water underneath the pond, you know, and it was not easy to get it out. So once we got it down right into the deep end, all there was left to do was wait for the water to drain. And, you know, we let it run for about five, ten minutes, you know, just standing around, letting the pump do its thing. All the water flooded out. And yeah, after about an hour or so, most of the water had gone from underneath the pond. So as you can see, the pond's still draining out. Um, we fixed the issue, obviously, with the tape. Uh, these are the slabs. Let's take out three slabs. Um, 
not too bad though. The liner was all good condition. Obviously, like we said, the membrane came in clutch because it stopped the mud from mixing in with the water, which meant, you know, it's an easy fix. As you can see, the pond's looking a lot better. Um, once we drain all the water out, the next stage is to uh, push all the liner back where it should be. So that should all realistically dip off around about here. And it goes down to about five, six feet deep in the middle. And then it's about two foot, three feet deep around the edges. So to push this down the middle, so it's about a lot deeper in the middle, basically. But yeah, it's all going well. And finally, after about an hour or two, the pond was completely drained. As you can see, you can now see the divot in the middle of the pond where the deep end is. And you know, this was tremendous progress, you know. And there was only a tiny bit of water left at the very bottom of the pond. As you can see here, all the water that was on the shallow area of the pond had gone away by now. That was a very good sign because it means, you know, all the water had been drained out from the edges. And all that was left was a small pool of water in the middle. Now, there was some water still on the top of the liner from, you know, just water that was left over in the pond. But that was useful to leave in the pond because it had some beneficial bacteria in it. And from this angle, you can see, you know, once we'd sort of flattened it out, the, the divot was completely full. And, you know, the water was still there, but there wasn't too much left. Obviously, we couldn't get all the water out, but we managed to get like 99% of the water out. And obviously, it was great news to see that all the water had been removed from the pond. You know, was, I was happy to see that, really. And this was sort of the setup we had around the edges. The next task was to fix the liner by pulling it up to the edges. Obviously, it had been moved away and sort of moved around a bit. So we had to sort of pull it tight to the seams in the corners and get it all nice and snug with the floor. Then we gathered up some rocks to place on the bottom just to stop the liner from floating away when we start to fill it up. This was just so that, you know, it didn't start to bubble again or anything like that. And then after we'd done that, we got out of the pond, got the hose pipe and started to fill it back up again. So we put the hose pipe on, got it turned on and just started filling the pond back up. Honestly, this was the best moment, you know, all the hard work had paid off and, you know, the pond was now getting back to normal. Whereas I leave it filling up for, you know, a few hours, obviously it's going to take ages to fill up a pond like this. And yeah, just had to wait. Yeah, so now I've done most of the repairs, uh, me and my dad, and yeah. All that's left to do now is just let the pond fill up, really. Um, I left some rocks in the bottom, as you can see in the previous video, so that it won't float back up. But yeah, I'm just happy I fixed it now. Um, and yeah, uh, once it's filled back up, I'm going to turn the filter back on. The filter itself, actually, I left all the water in there so that all the beneficial bacteria don't die. So I want to turn it back on. I put some dechlorinator in, and then basically I've got the pond running for about two days. And then the filter had the beneficial bacteria back, and then I put all the plants back in. And then I put a couple of fish in as a tester, see how they do. If they're completely fine, then all the fish can go back in. I will be leaving the goldfish in the tub, just so that... Um, so that I can remove the goldfish from the pond because, you know, there's too many in there at the moment. So I'll be removing all the goldfish from the pond and then putting them, the uh, koi back into the pond. But yeah, I'm just happy I fixed it all. And yeah, that's basically it for the video. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed.